Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lama, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com here to do your weekly angel card reading for Monday, November 16th through Sunday, November 22nd, 2015. This is take two of the weekly angel card reading for this week. I did it uh, yesterday and uploaded it on YouTube and had a few comments from people saying that uh, about three quarters of the way or two thirds of the way through the video, the picture froze and then there was a portion where the sound went out. So I am going to redo it uh, with in front of the camera with the cards that were pulled yesterday uh, sitting here by my side. So no new cards. I'm going to go with the same ones that were pulled for the original video. And also want to show you your crystals for the day. The crystals of choice are carnelian. The carnelian, and this is for the special message card, the carnelian vibrates to your sacral chakra area. And this is your center of passion and creativity. So it's where you can feel that sense of passion for what you're doing as far as your life path is concerned. The second stone of choice for your special message card for this weekly reading is a banded amethyst. Now, this is just like a regular amethyst, but it does have some inclusions of white in it or bands of white in it, as you can see here, which is why it's called banded. But it still has the same properties of an amethyst. So it relates to the crown chakra, opening yourself up to higher guidance, messages, wisdom from a source, God, and spirit. Also good for remembering your dreams. The last stone of choice for the special message card is citrine. This is a citrine point. And the citrine relates to the solar plexus chakra. This is your center of confidence and assuredness, your sense of willpower, your sense of courage. So this is going to help you to feel stronger within your sense of independence and who you are. It also is a stone that relates to abundance and prosperity. So again, your stones of choice are carnelian, banded amethyst, and then the citrine point. Now before we get into the cards for the week and before we get into the astrology for the week I want to make just a couple of quick announcements and one is, is that I've recently done a soul reflections video that talks a little bit about the upcoming astrological energies between now and like maybe January, February of 2016. There's a lot kind of going on and coming to a head. And then uh, even throughout some of the year of 2016, there's some things that are coming into play. So you'll want to be sure to go back and review and look at that soul reflections video that I just did. And the other announcement is that I'm actually going to be doing, I was led uh, through my angels and guides to do a workshop. And at first I was going to do the workshop in person in my area and it kind of uh, unfolded to be a conference call workshop that anyone in the United States or outside of the United States can attend. If you're outside of the United States, you can actually use your Skype account to call in for free on the conference call number. And it's, it's just very simple. Once you register for the workshop, um, I will get the pertinent information from you and I will give you the conference calling number and the PIN number to connect at that time. So this workshop is going to be November 22nd, which is Sunday. It will be from 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and the cost is going to be $60 U.S. dollars and all of that uh, details of the information uh, you can find on my Facebook page at Colleen Lama and just scroll down and look for that information. You can Facebook message me or you can email me at Colleen at ColleenLama.com if you would like to register or need further information and details. So would love to have you at that conference call. I'm going to cover things like the uh, Pluto Uranus square that's coming back closer together towards the end of this year, beginning of next year. Now, even though we had our seven exact Pluto Uranus squares, Pluto and Uranus come very close uh, together within a degree, although not coming into exactness. But we're going to be talking a little bit about that. 
We're going to be talking about Saturn squaring Neptune. That's coming to a head this month of November, but also in two other months throughout the year 2016 and what that's all about. Saturn is about uh, karmic lessons. And Neptune is about having faith and trust with some of the things that are going on on the planet and in your lives individually that may not be making sense. And we're also going to be talking a lot about the North Node and South Node moving from the signs of Libra Aries into Virgo and Pisces. While they were in Libra Aries for the last few months, it was all about relationships, uh, self versus others. Now that we're moving the nodes into the sign of Pisces and Virgo, it's got a whole different flavor for the next few months, and I want to talk a little bit about that. So if you want to uh, be able to understand how it's affecting you as an individual in your lives personally, and or if you want to understand how it's affecting the planet and humanity as a whole, please think about attending, signing up and attending that workshop. Again, November 22nd. So uh, let me know if you want to be a part of that. So let's get into the astrology for this week, November 16th through November 22nd. We start out on Tuesday the 17th with the sun coming together with the planet Mercury. Now both of these planets are in the sign of Scorpio. So we have deep transformation on a mental level, okay? Mercury is about our thoughts, our ideas, our communications, both with others and within our own heads, or within our own ego selves. And the sign of Scorpio there is going to highlight uh, a lot of these energies on the subconscious level. And they're going to highlight energies of empowerment, um, your belief systems about your sense of empowerment, your thought processes about power. It's going to also bring forth an intensity of your ability to be empathic and or psychic. So having these psychic impressions or telepathic abilities uh, with communications with others and or being, again, more perceptive with just the energies of the environment and the people around you. On Wednesday the 18th, Neptune, the planet of spirituality, the planet that rules other dimensions of time and space, the planet that also sometimes rules deception and confusion, is going stationary direct that day. And so what that means is Neptune is slowing down and getting ready to move forward again. And whenever a planet starts to slow down to either move retrograde or move direct forward, it is intensifying the energies of that planet and what it means and the potential of intensifying any connection that it's making with other planets, which right now it is making that connection with Saturn in Sagittarius. So this is going to intensify some energies of, I want to say, confusion and not being sure of what's really happening or what's going on. Things may not be making any sense. There's karmic lessons that are happening in regards to your own sense of faith and trust and your belief systems, both spiritual beliefs, religious beliefs, as well as your beliefs about yourself, your life, your destiny path, and again, what's going on around you. So there's going to be some intensifying of spiritual energies there to where you're going to want to uh, just really kind of ground yourself in the energy of knowing that you're divinely guided and protected and to trust the process, trust that everything is happening for a reason. When we move into Wednesday and Thursday, the moon is going through Aquarius and making a series of aspects with some planets that uh, may feel a little challenging in a way. The moon in Aquarius will be squaring the sun and then Mercury and then Saturn, and then coming together to conjunct the planet of Neptune. So as the moon is going through and connecting with all of these planets, there may be a little bit of uh, mental frustration, a little bit maybe feeling stuck, um, but again, it's something that moves rather quickly and passes quickly, so kind of secure yourself with that um, moon as it goes into Pisces and uh, comes together with uh, Neptune. As we move into Friday, the 20th, Mercury, the planet, again, of our thoughts, our communications, is moving into the sign of Sagittarius, so it's going to actually be a lot lighter. While it was moving through Scorpio, it, there was a, a certain amount of 
uh, heaviness, as there often is with that sign of Scorpio. Um, it did allow us to have uh, more deep perceptions or psychic perceptions or abilities to think on a deeper level, which was very good. But as Mercury moves into Sagittarius, there's a lightness that comes back in. There's an inspiration, a creative kind of aspect, an optimistic aspect with our thoughts and our belief systems that kind of comes back into play. Um, on the same day, Friday, Venus is actually squaring Pluto. Now, Venus is the planet of love, relationships, as well as money and finances. And it's going to be making a challenging aspect to Pluto, but I feel like this is one that helps to bring a sense of empowerment. It helps to bring empowerment to the divine feminine. It helps to bring empowerment and transformation and changes both within relationships and with um, our, our money situations or financial situations in our life. Also on that day, um, the moon in Pisces comes together with Chiron, the wounded healer, and opposes Jupiter in Virgo. So there may be a time period on Friday to where we are tapping into some sort of inner past life wound regarding our sense of spirituality, faith, and trust, and helping us to expand our beliefs into uh, something that is maybe more optimistic or assisting us in looking at things from a different perspective and understanding where does that wound come from. You know, it's, it's one thing to just feel like down or depressed or wounded or, or have something kind of come up um, within your energy system, but it's another thing to actually try to understand where that comes from. Where does that stem from? You know, how can you look at that and say, okay, I'm feeling upset or frustrated. I'm feeling depressed or anxious. Now, ask yourself, where is this coming from? What is it connected to in this life or maybe even in a previous lifetime? And if you ask that question to your angels and guides and you ask that question out loud um, to God, to universe, you'll oftentimes get a response in the, in the form of some sort of vision or aha moment or maybe a dream that you have. So practice using that energy because we want that healing to be able to take place for you. And then on Saturday and Sunday, there's a lot of activity with the moon Saturday and Sunday. Uh, first on Sunday, I want to say that the sun will also move into the sign of Sagittarius. So then both Mercury and the sun will be in that more kind of optimistic, uh, happy-go-lucky, fire energy. But also Sagittarius is about our belief systems. And sometimes it can be about judgment too. And with the Saturn and Neptune square coming closer together, um, and I believe it actually comes to a head next week, but we're feeling this strongly and have been for the past couple of weeks at least, that Sagittarius energy can be sometimes about judgment, like I'm right and you're wrong, and um, you know. Then it talks about uh, religious beliefs too, and so we have all these things going on on the planet right now with religious factions and organizations, and you know, people's belief systems spiritually, and they're right and that other group is wrong, and so it's causing a lot of um, challenges on the planet uh, as. You know, we've kind of witnessed with uh, what happened in, in Paris, France. Now, understand that some of what you're given is disinformation and not actually uh, true information, but there's still a fact that there's something going on there, and we want to send healing and love and light to the people that are affected, even if what is going on is somewhat of an illusion or somewhat set up by those that are in power and control that are trying to cause uh, fear and imbalance on the planet. Also on Saturday and Sunday, the moon is uh, making a lot of aspects to a lot of planets. It first on Saturday connects with the sun and then Mercury and then Saturn, all with positive aspects. And then it opposes Mars, and then as we go into Sunday, it actually squares Pluto, opposes Venus, and conjuncts Uranus. And so we're talking about almost virtually every planet here, not necessarily every planet, but almost every planet, is being affected. So that, that is just an indication that there's going to be a lot of activity, a lot of things kind of changing, redirecting, happening, coming in, being presented. And so you'll want to pay attention 
especially Sunday when it uh, connects with Pluto and Uranus. What is being shown here to us? What's transforming? There's an initiation of some sort of new energy that's coming in. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the cards for the week. Now, when I was shuffling and meditating yesterday when I first did the video, I usually, as you all know, uh, choose usually three cards from Doreen Virtue's Angel Tarot deck. While I was shuffling, there was a fourth card that uh, kind of came out and presented itself. So I also pulled that card as an extra energy for the week. So, and before I forget, I want to say the extra special message card comes from Doreen Virtue's Goddess Guidance Oracle deck. So I want to make sure that I get that in there. The first card for the week is actually... Very positive, uplifting, wonderful card. This is the Wheel of Fortune with Archangel Michael. The message at the bottom says, a time of positive change, a situation suddenly moves forward, and fortune is on your side. So I feel you know, very good about this being our first card of the week. This is saying there's a cycle of new energy coming in, just as I uh, said. This cycle of new energy is going to be positive in nature, but just, just as we know, to have a new cycle, that means an old cycle is leaving. And a lot of times when an old cycle is leaving or old energies are being released or let go, it can be rather challenging because those energies are something that we're used to, it's familiar to us, and sometimes we don't like to let go of things, even if it's something that we know is not good for us or is not in our highest and best interest. So there can be a feeling of challenge as the old is being released or purged or transmuted from our lives. But this is definitely saying that that new energy coming in, this new cycle of energy that's about to begin, is going to be very, very uplifting and very positive. It's going to bring in something new, something better. And one thing that I pointed out yesterday uh, with this card, if you can see, around the Wheel of Fortune here, around Archangel Michael, um, there's four... Um, four circles or four globes or orbs of energy here um, that are taking place. And I related that with the four elements, fire, earth, air, water, the four directions in the Native American tradition. Um, even the four major archangels, Michael, Uriel, Raphael, Gabriel, so I feel like that, that number four energy of manifestation and focus and organization and creating a solid foundation in our lives is something that needs to be paid attention to. We are creating this new cycle of energy. We're trying to manifest a new beginning. We're trying to manifest a new focus of energy. And so call upon the archangels, uh, not necessarily just the four majors, but call on all of them. And call in even the elements. Balance the elements within your life, uh, especially in this week. Fire, passion, and spirit. Water, emotion, and feelings. Air, our thought processes, our belief systems. And then earth is the earth element of, again, manifestation and grounding something into place. So very good start to the week. Let's look at the second card that came up in the reading. Whoops. And this is the Queen of Water. And the key words at the top of this card say tender-hearted, empathetic, patient, and loving. The message at the bottom, relationships develop to a new level. Trust your intuition. Care for yourself and others. And what I feel about this is that it's asking us to connect more deeply with our spiritual selves, our emotional selves, our um, nurturing selves, the divine feminine really. And I kind of liken this to Neptune going stationary direct. Remember I said the Neptune energies were going to intensify? And I feel like this is connected to those Neptunian energies because Neptune can be about unconditional love and compassion and really merging yourself with your higher dimensional energies, merging yourself with your God self energies is very Neptunian. Neptune does not have boundaries. Again, Neptune is kind of about the other spiritual dimensions, the spirit world. And a lot of times what we see as our reality on this planet or within our lives is not really a true reality. Neptune is trying to get us to see beyond 
the logic beyond what we see with our physical eyes. Instead, open up your heart chakra and look with your spiritual eyes as to the potential and what may truly be going on here. So again, this is calling for you to have trust and faith, calling for you to have unconditional love for other people and for yourself, and to bring out that nurturing divine feminine energy as you move forward throughout this week. The third card that came up is the Eight of Fire. So here we have this fire energy. Now, the number eight is about empowerment. Um, and a lot of times when we see the Eight of Fire, which is also the Eight of Rods or the Eight of Wands in traditional tarot decks, this is talking about fast movement of energies. The message at the bottom says, events moving at a fast pace. Delays are over and many things happening at once. So if there's been an energy of delay in your life, if there's been something you're working on with career or projects or even something that you've been aiming for with relationship matters or money matters, this is saying that these delays are going to be over soon, perhaps by the end of this week, um, but at the very least, very soon, that delays are going to be over or the, the stagnation is going to be over. Um, and things are going to start moving relatively quickly. You know, once the energy lets loose and kind of, uh, it's like, it's like unleashing, it's almost like having a, a dam that's kind of holding back the water. And once that dam is opened or uh, breaks, you know, the, the waters break free, they start, they start rushing in and moving very quickly and very fast. And this is the same kind of energy. So there's a lot of spiritual inspiration with this energy, a lot of creative energy with this um, card. There is, again, it can be chaotic, as you can see, the energy of the card, the picture on the card. A lot of chaotic movement of fire energies here. So everything's going this way and that way all at once. And it can be a little unsettling, uh, that chaotic energy. It can bring some confusion. But it's definitely bringing some positive movement of energies um, because the eight of, eight of Wands or the Eight of Fire here is positive movement of energy. Things happening, again, very quickly. The last card, that fourth card that came out of the deck, is the Three of Fire. So here we have another fire element card. So again, this is spiritual energy, creative life force energy. The number three here is about expansion and growth, prosperity and abundance. The message at the bottom says, abundance. Things look very good. Have patience at this time and make long-term plans. So again, there's that little indication that you still might have to have an element of patience as this rush of new energy comes in, as this cycle of new energy with the Wheel of Fortune begins. So it's saying that there's something positively growing and expanding. We're moving in the right direction. I also feel like the number three is often about learning something new, paying attention again to your belief systems. The more positive and uplifting you can stay with your belief systems on a mental level, the more you're going to manifest and bring to you, magnetize to you, uh, positive blessings in your life. Blessings, abundance, prosperity, happiness, joy, which is to me what this card is all about. But again, make long-term plans. So they're talking about here a little bit off in the future and you're, we're still needing to have patience. And so even though I think things are going to break free, there's going to be something that breaks free this week, we still may have uh, the need to uh, have that patience to progress through the next few weeks. And I'm feeling maybe even through like till January, February and into March where things are unfolding. Now I think they're going to start unfolding more and more quickly. Transformation and redirection is going to happen more quickly. But it's not going to happen all at once and overnight. So just have that patience. So again, this week's energy looks very good. Wheel of Fortune. Queen of Water, Eight of Fire, and Three of Fire. Now, your extra special message card, depending on your stone of choice, those people that chose the Carnelian, your special message card is vast, independence. Your independence is a foundation for your strength and success. So this is talking about... To me, solar plexus energies, even though this stone I said was uh, sacral chakra energies, 
So let's just say sacral chakra, solar plexus energies, your sense of passion, but your sense of strength, confidence, and independence, which is solar plexus, is needing to shine through. This is saying that you're supposed to take charge of something this week. Um, be independent. Be a leader. Initiate something. Um, show your leadership abilities in this week, whether for yourself in your own career path, life path, or whether it is within a group of people and taking charge, or within your career and taking charge, or within a relationship and taking charge. Um, this is very much an energy of, if you can see how she's standing here, just very confident and self-assured. And that's how you need to be as you move throughout this week, is showing that sense of confidence and assuredness and taking charge of yourself and your life path, as well as any situation that you intuitively know that this is, might be speaking about, um, and this will gain you a very positive outcome. For those of you that chose the banded amethyst, this is Rhiannon, says sorceress. The message at the bottom, you are a magical person who can manifest your clear intentions into reality. So this is, again, kind of crown chakra energy. The stone itself is about crown chakra energy and opening up to divine guidance and spiritual energies. But if you look closely at this card, Rihanna in here has, um, she's wearing like a wreath around her uh, head, around her crown chakra, third eye chakra area. And from this wreath, if you can see that clearly at all, there's this energy that's coming out and flowing out from the crown chakra. And just as this card says, you have the ability to manifest your intentions. You have the magical energy, the magical power and spiritual energy within you to create through your thoughts, your ideas, which is all that crown chakra energy, and your intentions. So let that flow. Let the intentions flow, and then trust and have faith in spirit that everything's going to manifest the way you envision it. So another, uh, another reminder to stay in the positive realm. Don't get caught up in any fear or doubts or anxieties with this, because just as you can manifest the positive and the blessings in life, you could also manifest um, what's not so positive if that's what you're focusing on. So know that uh, you kind of have that gift of manifestation this particular week. And then for those of you that chose the citrine, citrine, your message for the week is Bridget. And it says, don't back down. Stand up for what you believe is right. All three of these goddesses have a special strength and um, what do I want to say, a sense of like strength, independence, and uh, self-sufficiency about them. You know, they're all very strong. And, and with Bridget this week, for Citrine people, there may be a situation, a circumstance, maybe something within relationship or career to where you need to stand in your truth. Don't back down. Set proper boundaries. Um, own your truth. Own your power. And don't let somebody, you know, walk over you or don't let somebody invade your boundaries. Don't allow people to take advantage of you in any way. It's time to stand up for yourself. It's time to um, have that sense of independence and clarity and strength. And as I look at this, if you see, she's kind of holding a light. I don't even know what the light is. It looks like a fire flame. That kind of relates to the three of fire and the eight of fire that we had this week. But I'm especially intrigued with where she's holding that fire. She's holding it over the heart chakra and up towards the throat chakra. So this is you opening up that heart chakra and knowing that um, you're setting these proper boundaries for yourself and using your spiritual power with a sense of unconditional love. But again, don't back down means speaking your truth. And there's this fire here that's at her throat chakra to where she's speaking her truth very directly, although I want to say with that heart chakra there, with compassion and unconditional love. So 